Hey everyone, this is Philip from Beyond the Tabletop. This episode I'm going to be talking about magnetising the Hive Guard weapon options. So in one of the previous videos I did the Tyrant Guard magnetising the arms for that. This time using the same kit I'm making the Hive Guard. The Hive Guard come with two weapons. There is the Impaler Cannon and the Shock Cannon. They both do different things and when I'm building this I want to make sure that I can actually playtest both options out. So the gun itself is split into two halves that I've glued together. So if you just look at the impaler cannon, this end here is detachable from this section. The back section has the arm. So as you can see from the back, this section loops around. Now you could have left this not glued in and also not glued that and this would have slid on and off the end. However, once it's all painted up, I wasn't too convinced that that would actually work. Especially on the other one is a little bit more complicated. So here, trying to slide this weapon option off, and then this coming across, it's going to be snagging more than likely on the arm. And there's a good chance that the paint's going to constantly chip off if I'm swapping these weapon options around quite a bit. So I've decided to go for a slightly different option where I've got two gun options and I've magnetised them instead. Because I've already built the Tyrant Guard kit, I've already got an extra gun from that kit. So I've already got some spare bits, so it made sense to try and do it this way. So looking at the torso, I've magnetised the right arm. This is going to be attached to the gun barrel here, so that's going to magnetise in just like that and then for the left arm this one actually is going to be glued in place because I don't need to magnetize this one so that can be glued in as a sort of permanent point and then as you can see I've just magnetized where the arms join the hand so it will go in like so that socket will be glued in so that gives it the stability to kind of keep it upright so it'll work like that. And then if I want to swap out the gun, I can just clip in these two, like so. So with the arms all magnetized together, it should be quite a straightforward job in just swapping these two out, like so. So the main benefit of magnetizing it in this fashion is that it's quick and easy, but also I'm limiting the amount of damage that I could do to the paintwork. Whereas if I was to be constantly sliding this on and off, I'm more likely to be damaging the paintwork here and also at this end point. If you don't have a spare kit for this extra arm, then you can't do the method that I'm doing. However, what I would suggest is where the barrel section is for this section, cutting that off and placing a magnet in there. And while these bits are unglued, you're going to be minimizing the damage that you'll be doing here because this can just snap into place like that rather than having to slide it on and scratch all this section off. So these are all the things that you'll need for this tutorial. I've got my plastic hive guard pieces for the two weapons, the arm and the torso. I've cleaned up all the mold lines and green stuff them where needed. I've already pre-glued my barrel ends to the gun section, although you could actually leave that off and glue them on at a later stage. I've got some three millimeter magnets and two millimeter magnets. They're both one millimeter in depth. The three millimeter magnets go into the arm sockets. So here, here, and on the other side of here, as well as the wrist section here and here. The two millimeter magnets go into the other side of the wrist, which is just here and here. And that's just because the three millimeter magnets are far too big to fit into there. And you'll also need some trusty super glue. So let's join this arm socket to this section of the torso. So it's the top right arm hole. It just needs to be drilled in at a completely straight angle. And then we're going to magnetize both ends. So similar to the Tyrant Guard tutorial, I always recommend doing a pilot hole first. So this is why you need your one millimeter drill. We're just going to use that and that is going to create a hole which will be a guide for the larger drill. So let's just drill down. Let 
only need to go down a couple of millimetres. You don't want to go too far because you might burst through on this side. So I think that's fine. Then you want to switch it out to your three millimetre drill. Also just go down a small amount. to be quite gentle because you don't want to take too much plastic off so that looks like I've gone down you can just see on the sides looks like I've gone down just enough now all you need to do is you can just casually try and fit in your magnet and see if it fits in and then before I glue a magnet in, I just need to check the polarity because I've already pre-built some of these. So I want to make sure that the arm sockets in terms of the north and south of the magnets all line up with the ones I've previously built. So if I take this one that I've already built and just check the polarity, because this one has attached to the magnet in there, that means I know that this end goes in here like so. I just need a small amount of super glue. I just need to push this one in as best as I can. So I can see it's gone in slightly. Just going to use this to help push it all the way in. So that's definitely much more flush than it first was. And that was just using my mold line remover, which has seen better days. So with that one in, I can just test it out with one of my pre-magnetized arms, just to double check that the magnets are still in the right way. Yeah. So I now need to magnetize the gun arm. I can just check this out with how I've previously done it in terms of the angle that I need to do. And another way to do that if I assemble with my fingers this model, sort of get all the contact points lined up, like so, I can see which part of the arm needs to be magnetized. And I can see that it's this little stub here. So again, I'll take my pilot drill want to get the angle pretty correct so you might need to drill in slightly more on this side and then with the three millimeter drill carefully go in because what we're going to do is we're going to have to lose some of the siding because the drill is too big but eventually we get to a stage where we can fit the magnet in. Okay, I think that's I think that's probably enough. I could probably go a little bit further just to make sure it's going to be in there flush. So yeah, that's probably more than enough not a little bit too much so I need to be careful that I don't push it in too far when I'm gluing it and when we're checking the polarity for the magnets I need to just put this set of magnets into my torso 
and then I know that this magnet is the one that needs to go into the arm. So let's take that stack off. So let's just double check, do like a little soft fit, make sure it goes in, which it does. So let's just put that down there the right way around. Do a little drop of glue. That's enough. So I always find it's best to stick in a magnet and then do a sliding motion, which breaks the contacts. As you can see, it's in there perfectly flush. So what you can do just to make sure that that magnet's never going to come out is just put a thin layer of super glue just on top and around the sides. That's just gonna help seal it in. So let's leave that one to dry for a minute. So with this arm drying, I can do the exact same thing on the other arm. So I need to magnetize this socket in the exact same way. So I know with this arm, I need to drill it in around about that direction. The key thing to doing this type of magnetizing is to make sure that these two arms, these two socket arms line up. So this one and this one really need to be at the exact same angle because if you get it wrong, then it kind of messes up the whole thing. So you need to be very careful that these two magnets are gonna be as, as close as possible in proximity to each other. So again, once you've drilled your pilot hole, okay, check both sides. I think that's going to be deep enough. Yeah, be able to stick that in. So just going to put a bit of glue down. Just going to quickly check the polarity of magnets. Like so, just so I know which way it goes in. So it's on this side, so I know this is the end of the magnet that I can put in. Like so. Let's be in. Just want to push it in and slide it. You can just push it in slightly. Okay. I think that one's fine. Let's see how they line up together. So as you can see, they're pretty similar in their angle, which is just what I want. If I take the torso, just need to make sure they're all going to snap in at the same angle. Like so, I think that's pretty similar. So next up, we're going to do the left arm. We don't need to do the socket here because that's going to be glued in place to the torso. We just need to magnetize these two wrists here because these are going to be magnetized to this section here. So we're going to magnetize each side. So that requires four magnets. So I'm going to use two millimeter magnets here and here, but to be on the safe side, I'm going to use three millimeter magnets here and here. If you want, you can use two millimeter magnets I just want to make sure that the weight is going to be supported, so I'm using slightly larger and therefore stronger magnets. So with this one, again with the pilot holes, you just need to drill them in to dead center. Or as close to the center as you can be. You can see that these two little notches act as a really good guide for where you need to place it. This time you don't really need to worry too much about how deep you go because obviously it's an arm, you've got a lot more plastic. And then just switch it around to your three millimeter drill when you're ready. So there you go, that's probably just a little bit deeper. And 
Okay, so that's one done. What you'll notice is where the notch is, that bit of plastic will disappear, but that's okay, because that's going to be replaced by the magnet. So let's just do the top one. So you can see it's sort of just splitting the plastic ever so slightly, which is why if you do have enough magnets, I would possibly be recommending doing the two millimeter one. That or you just need to be really careful where you're drilling because you can see I'm slightly off on that one. In terms of the polarity of these magnets, you need to make sure that this one and this one go in at the same polarity, um, but it doesn't need to line up with anything else except the receiving end of these magnets. So I'm just going to line this up with an arm that I've already done just to make sure all the arms and guns can be compatible with each other. So they snap together like so, which just means I know it needs to go in this way. Now my drill I think is ever so slightly on the small side for these magnets. Oh I think that one goes in okay. That one might just squeeze in. So I'm just going to drill out these slightly. Give it a bit of a wiggle just to make sure there's enough room for these magnets. So what I'm doing is I'm drilling less downwards and more sort of just pushing the drill to the side just to help expand out that whole size just to give me a bit of room for those magnets. Right, I think that will, there you go, I've already popped one in, so let's just ping him out. Okay, now it might seem quicker to put glue into both holes at the same time, however I find I end up getting glue all over myself when I do that, so I'm just going to do one at a time, that way it keeps things clean. Let's do the top hole. Grab the magnets. Check the polarity with one that I've previously done. And just put it in like so. So just need to slide that across. Nice and easy. So again, put a bit of glue in the bottom one. Just double check the polarity with that. Put him in, slide him off, just wipe off some of that excess glue. What I might do is just add a little bit of glue to these top sections just to help seal that magnet in, like so. Okay, so that's this arm complete. I'm just going to leave that to one side. And then we can start on the arms. So I just need to drill my pilot holes on this one. So I know that it can go right in the middle of each one. So I can just go down ever so slightly to make sure it's lined up. Mm, it's not too bad. I mean, it's slightly off, but I think that'll be okay. And likewise on this side, just go in ever so slightly. Okay. What I can do is just drill slightly in, that'll help recenter the drill. Okay. So there are two pilot holes drilled. Pretty center. So I've just changed over my drill from the one millimeter one to my two millimeter one. So now I can just carefully drill down into here. Let's try and get it on cam for you. Okay, so you can see that it got drilled pretty deep pretty easily. 
but with the pilot hole the difference in size isn't too much difference so it should go down really well okay so I've got my holes already drilled out I've got my magnet I just want to try and fit them now it's a little bit tight these ones because my drill is ever so slightly too small so what I'm going to do is just drill down again but this time rather than drilling downwards I'm going to sort of just push the drill slightly to the side because that will help expand out the hole now I just sort of want to do this so I'm pushing with my thumb sideways just as I, I rotate it around I'm going to do it on the other side as well okay. I think there's going to be a bit of a squeeze, but I can fit those in now. So I just need to check the polarity with the arms that I've done. So by it being snapped in that way, I know I need to glue in the magnets at this end. So I'll just keep that to one side. Again, I'll do one hole at a time. Take my magnets from there. Push it in, slide it. And let's get my old line remover. Just use that to push it in until it's flush, like so. Okay, so that's one dump. Let's do the next one. Again, let's get my polarity all set, so I know that's all good to go. Put some glue in the hole. Get my magnets. Push it in. And this one goes in much easier. And then let's just... Push that flush. If you want to be extra cautious, you could recess them ever so slightly. That way, they're definitely not going to be visible when you connect it to the arm. So, with the magnets all dry, I can just do a little test fit with my arm. Just snap them together like so. Just double check it looks okay from all angles. I think that's okay. What you might find is depending on the position of magnets, they might sort of move around slightly more like this or that, but as long as it's sort of roughly centre, you should be okay. So that's it for the shock cannon. Now I just need to do the impaler cannon. So I've got my impaler cannon where I've already done the arm magnet. So again, it's the same thing, pilot holes and then just glue it all together. So let's quickly draw the pilot holes. Make sure I'm giving it in the center. That's pretty good. Thank you. That one's fine. So I've swapped out to my two millimeter drill. So I can just go down and drill these holes out. So I know I'm going to have to expand these hole sizes slightly, just like the last one. I'm just putting pressure sort of all around on all the different sides just to enlarge the hole as evenly as possible. So those guys look pretty center. Let's just see if the magnets fit. Okay, I reckon they're at a stage where I'll be able to push those in. Because you can sort of just see slightly them starting to go in. So again, let's get the plenty of the magnets all lined up. Then I can put that to one side. 
and a bit of glue in the hole. Okay, you can push one in. So that one seems pretty flush now. So just pour a bit of glue into here. Just double check the clarity on the arm. So it needs to go, needs to go in this way. Just push this down. That's the finished result for the impaler cannon. I mean, it looks a little bit messy with the glue. I can just tidy that up. Let's see how it holds out. Okay, so that's a pretty good joint. Definitely none of the magnets are visible. So I'll just dry fit this left arm by just holding it in place to sort of represent what it'll be like once it's glued. I can just try these arms and see how they attach in. So that's the shock cannon, seems pretty good. I don't think, I think the most noticeable drawing will be here, but I don't think that will be too visible. And then again with the impaler cannon. Yeah, I think the slight gap that you'll get there won't be too visible, especially once it's all painted up. That's all for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a pretty straightforward video. It'll be interesting to see how this all fits together once it's painted up. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give me a thumbs up or hit me below in the comments. If you're interested in similar videos or would like to see how I paint these hive guard up, please do subscribe. Until the next time, take care.